Today, we're going to talk to you about a piece of equipment that all off-roaders and overlanders should pay very close attention to. Fire extinguishers. This is a must-have item. In fact, many off-road parks and overland groups require that you have one and that it's easily accessible. We'll talk briefly about their obvious importance. Types? Which one do we need for which type of fire? Ways to mount them securely within arm's reach? Proactive steps we can all make towards preventing vehicle-based or caused fires. And at the end of the video, we'll demonstrate the proper use by putting out a fire. This is Wanderlust Overland. Where the heck are we? Well, this can't be right. Now we've all seen videos and pictures, maybe even in person, of a car going up in flames or the aftermath of a car fire. It's not a pretty sight. And the worst part is many could have been prevented or put out before they got too far out of control. So let's start with that, prevention. Okay, but let's do it quick. I wanna put out a fire. From what we've seen over the many, many years of being around vehicles, most notably modified vehicles, car fires were usually caused by three things. Probably the most common are badly designed or installed electrical circuits for added on lights and accessories. Usually trying to push too many amps through improperly sized wires, switches, and connectors. They get hot, then they start the plastic and rubber pieces around them on fire. Do it right or pay someone to do it right. Another are hoses containing fuel, oil, or brake fluid bursting and spraying on the hot exhaust. Routinely inspect your vehicle, replace old brittle rubber lines and rusty metal brake lines. And make sure there's plenty of clearance between anything flammable and the hot exhaust. Speaking of hot exhaust, the third most common cause of fires is parking in tall, dry grass. The grass touches the super hot catalytic converters and poof, up in flames you go. Then there's the common campsite fires, bacon grease catching fire on the stove, uh, campfire getting out of control, and that occasional hold my beer and watch this moment. So we need to be prepared for the worst. We have to have at least one fire extinguisher and it must be in an accessible spot. Enough with the blah blah blah, keep the video moving. Sure, you can buy a cheap $17.95 extinguisher at Wally World, but you're only going to get $17.95 worth of extinguisher. With it, you get cheap plastic parts that'll easily break and a real flimsy mounting bracket. These cheap ones are also non-refillable, so one shot and they go into the landfill. Brackets like these are only good for mounting vertically on your kitchen wall, not for bouncing around in a vehicle. Throw these away. We all have a lot of money invested in our vehicles, our camping gear, and our lives. Don't cheap out on a fire extinguisher. We got ours from a company called H3R Performance. They do one thing, fire extinguishers for vehicles, and they do it very well. We put a link to them in the video description below. Okay, real quick, there are three common types of fire extinguishers. Class A is flammable stuff like wood, paper, plastic, and grass. Class B is for flammable liquids like gas, oil, and brake fluid. C is for putting out electrical fires. The most common extinguishers available combine all three of these into one universal unit. That's what this extinguisher is. It's H3R's Max Out Class ABC unit. We'll be mounting it in the rear cargo area. It'll serve as backup and for putting out kitchen fires, grass fires, and whatever else happens while we're in camp. This one's gonna be our primary extinguisher within arm's reach when we're driving. It's filled with medium designed for B and C, fires under the hood and behind the dash. The material inside normal BC fire extinguishers is extremely corrosive. Sure, you put the fire out, but now you need a new paint job and a whole new wiring harness. Unlike those others, this unit from H3R contains a very special extinguishing agent. It comes out as a liquid and evaporates almost immediately, leaving little or no residue. And it's environmentally friendly. So, it won't destroy your paint and wiring. As you may have guessed, this does come at a higher cost, but it has the potential for saving you thousands of dollars down the road. A few details on these. 
All the valving and trigger parts are metal, no plastic to get brittle and eventually fail. The majority of cheap extinguishers are disposable. These are fully rechargeable with pressure gauges. And they have a six year warranty. Okay, now it's time to put out a fire. Not yet. First, we want to show our friends some options on where and how to mount these. In the event of a fire emergency, time is of the essence. Let's do a little time study, first with the extinguisher in the cargo area where we see most people keeping theirs. Fire under the hood! Now with the extinguisher within arm's reach. Fire under the hood! Now you just saw the big difference that placement and ease of deployment makes. It's really critical to have that fire extinguisher within arm's reach. Probably the best place to mount one is right here at the base of the front seats on either side. To do that, we used H3R's universal seat mount and their extreme duty bracket. First, we take these brackets, slide them onto the extinguisher. Then we take this part of the extreme duty bracket and bolt down here. And this part of the extreme duty bracket bolts on to our seat mount. You can see this is two piece adjustable and that goes right here. And then you pick the, pick the holes that work best for you and we'll put some bolts in. Now I'm not going to tighten any of these nuts all the way up yet. I'm going to leave them tight enough so it doesn't move around too much, but loose enough to where we'll be able to slide it and move these brackets around too once we go to install it. Now the next few steps are going to vary between uh, different vehicles. For our Forerunner, how we're going to mount it is, and we've already gone through this before with some test fitting, take this bracket and we're going to put it here with these big bolts and washers and lock nuts. Now for bolting it to the seat itself, or the, the mounting bolts for the seat, you get two different brackets. These bigger ones fit our application a little bit better, so we're going to bolt these on. But again, we're going to keep everything slightly loose so we can move things, but tight enough to where it'll stay in position, to where we can tighten it up later. These brackets are fantastic. They're made to withstand the rigors of racing and off-roading and not accidentally opening up. The mechanism is really simple. This notch goes over this pin at the bottom, then it swings in, and then this pin that has a little detent, a spring-loaded detent on the end to keep it from pulling out accidentally, that goes through that hole. Just that simple. All right, to put it in the vehicle, we have to get to these front mounting points for the seat. To do that, we just simply pull off these plastic pieces and there's our bolt. All right, now we can put the bracket underneath. It goes underneath the seat mounts like this. And you see that this is re the reason why we didn't tighten up those bolts completely, because now we can manipulate it and adjust it so those brackets line up. And then put the seat bolts back in. Okay, we have it sitting exactly where we want it to be. Now we're going to very carefully take out the seat bolts, pull this whole thing out, take it to the bench, tighten up all the bolts. If you think this might be in the way, mounted in the front seat, this is another convenient spot and almost equally as accessible. 
For this application, we chose a Moly panel from Gray Man Tactical. It's made specifically for the back of a seat like this. Now as far as panels like this go, we're really impressed with this one. This is designed to hold a rifle or a shotgun, so you know it's more than strong enough to hold a fire extinguisher. And probably a rifle too. It's not metal, it's actually a injection molded glass filled nylon. It's very strong, but a lot lighter than metal. To mount our fire extinguisher bracket, we simply took some 16th inch thick aluminum, made these little brackets to go on the back side that the bolts go through. Now all the fasteners and the webbing on this is top notch quality and it's really easy to put on and take off. Just put that one around the headrest. Then you snap these down at the base. And then you can cinch it down so it's nice and tight so it doesn't move around. And there we go. Gray Man Tactical makes all sorts of unique mounting options for firearms. You should go check them out. We put a link to their website in the video description below. If having one fire extinguisher is good, then having two must be gooder. This is the ABC model that we got from H3R. We mounted it to our rear window panel the same way we mounted the other one to the seat back panel. This is going to come in really handy while we're at camp. Now do we put out a fire? Now we put out a fire. Like the majority of you watching, we're not experts at putting out fires. In fact, we believe the most important bit of knowledge is knowing when not to fight a fire. Seek out real training. Many local fire departments offer free classes on fire prevention. Remember the acronym PASS. P for pull the pin. A for aim at the base of the fire. S for squeeze the trigger, and S for sweep back and forth. We don't want to waste the contents of our new extinguishers, so we're going to use this old cheapie for our demonstration. This is a typical ABC unit. Well, we hope you enjoyed our video. We provided links to all the parts and pieces that we installed today in the video description below. And before you go, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Fire extinguishers. This is a must have item and many off-road parks and oh, I don't remember what the I'm saying. It's not a pretty sight. And the worst part is many could have been prevented or Put out. Put out. Line. <sighs> we'll be mounting it in the rear of our cargo area. Not in the rear of our cargo area. In the rear cargo area. This one's going to be our primary extinguisher. And I forgot whatever f next line I was.